What's up everybody and welcome back to a brand new Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links video. In today's Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links video, we have another round of upcoming updates for the game because Duel Links or Konami posted their upcoming list for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. If you guys are excited for the discussion on the upcoming updates for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, as always, be sure to go hit that like button on the video down below. But of course, you can wait to like the whole video until you watch the whole entire thing. Still, yeah, let's get going on today's um, upcoming updates because this one's going to be pretty important when it comes to the state of the game. And I'm hoping that Dark Signers are confirmed for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel so I hope that something in the upcoming updates confirms Dark Signers, because if it is, I'm going to be a very happy boy. Without further ado, though, let's go check out this new two all duelist upcoming updates. So first of all, oh snap! Okay, we got we got some important stuff coming over here. So first of all, we have an early April duelathon event. Nothing too crazy. We all know what duelathons are. You just auto duel in the game. You get a bunch of score and stuff like that, and boom, bada bang, there you go. Whoop TD right there. But still cool that we get duelathon free gems. Is always nice. We're probably going to get a new box soon, anyways, in the month of April. So it is what it is right there. Let's stock up on our gems and go for that next main box whenever that does drop. So that's pretty cool right there. Next up, we have a Casey Cup announcement. Casey Cup's going to be happening on April 1st or April 4th through the uh, 14th, which is pretty cool. So that um, stage is going to be happening. And then second stage is going to be happening on April 12th through 14th. So that's also pretty cool. So it's cool that Casey Cup is coming back into Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. It will mean, though, the next month is going to be crazy for um, the game because, you know, we have Ring PP to do if anybody grinds that. And then we have Casey Cup also. I'm glad that I am a King of Games player and that I'm already finished and I'm already in King of Games so that I can uh, get into stage two to automatically when it comes to this but i will do a live stream on the stage um or on the casey cup so i can get them rewards and stuff like that because it is good to go through all stage one so you get a lot of gems and stuff like that because i'm going to be honest the casey cup hooks it up when it comes to gems and everything like that so looking forward to that too like i'm not the like i'm kind of mutual on casey cup it depends on like what casey cup it is and depending on how the meta is sometimes the casey cup's a lot of fun sometimes it's not a lot of fun um but it is what it is but honestly if you're like a crazy competitive player casey cup can be very very tedious i just like uh live streaming the casey cup so it's a lot of fun right there so that's pretty cool casey cup is coming back hopefully we get some cool stuff right there and also the duelist that wins first place in the second stage casey cup will earn an invitation to ycs 2019 that's interesting that's pretty cool right there so yeah let's go take a look at some of the other updates next up we have another epic yugi epic yon or not epic yugi well I, yeah technically yeah epic yon will appear in dual world uh when duels to obtain the new ur card archfiend commander and the sr card the legendary exodia incarnate that's actually sick okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna open up a, a tab right here and we're gonna go check out some of these cards i didn't know we're doing a card review in today's episode that's just cool so let's go check out archfiend commander yeah, okay, this is kind of sick. So we're gonna go to the Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, we're gonna go to the Yu-Gi-Oh wiki. Yo, I don't know if my, you know, thing set up properly for this. Let's go check this out. Okay, it's actually set up properly for this. So this is Archfiend Commander. It's gonna be the UR that we're gonna be getting in the epic uh, Yami event, so that's pretty cool. What is this card? So this card is a dark, it's a six star fiend effect. It has 2,500 attack, 1,200 defense. If you control an Archfiend card, you can special summon this card from your hand. Ooh, that's pretty good. But sadly, it cannot attack this turn. You only can special summon an Archfiend commander once per turn this way. When special summon this way, target an Archfiend card you control, destroy that target. When this card's tribute summon, you can target a level six Archfiend monster in your graveyard, special summon the target in face of the defense position. That's not bad. Now, I'm not an experienced Archfiend player, but I can not already tell the synergy with it because from what I remember against going Archfiends and stuff, Archfiends do kind of like to destroy themselves and stuff. If you get that like eight star um, Archfiend card, that's like pretty popular where if you um, you can actually like normal summon it, but have its attack and defense cut in half, then you can follow up with Archfiend Commander, kind of go for some combos right there. I think that could be a decent idea. And yeah, I think some people would actually probably like Archfiend Commander. So that's pretty cool that we're getting Archfiend Commander in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. So it kind of pays homage to some of Cool, um, when it comes to the game right there. That's probably why we're getting it from Yugi nonetheless. So that's pretty sick. That's actually really cool right there. Like to see that we get a cool card like Archfiend Commander. So yeah, I don't know if it's going to make Archfiend's good for my first impressions on it, but I definitely think it's support that's nice for the deck. And I think you can run one to two copies of this card and an Archfiend deck could be pretty spicy. The other card we're going to talk about is the Legendary Exodia Incarnate or something like that. So let's go check that out. Let me go um, search it up real quick, because, yeah, I did not know that today's episode of uh, checking out uh, new updates, we had to involve uh, just looking up some cards. So, sorry for that, that I'm not prepared, but I like to do first impressions and all that stuff. Let's see if we can get another... Where is it? Okay. 
Yeah, let's go to Yu-Gi-Oh! Wiki again. So we're going to go back to over here. Now, I actually recognize this card because this card was actually in the Legendary Decks 2. If you guys know that TCG product, that TCG product gives you like three structure decks. And then Legendary Decks 2 is related to uh, Yu-Gi, Sado, and um, Joey. So I actually recognize this card. This card's kind of neat. So anyways, uh, legendary, the Legendary Exodia. This is a 10-star spellcaster dark monster. It cannot be normal summoner set. must be special summoned from your hand by tributing one forbidden one monster. It cannot be special summoned by other ways. This card gains a thousand attack for each forbidden one in your graveyard. It is unaffected by other cards' effects. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, once per turn, during your end phase, add one forbidden one monster from your graveyard to your hand. When this card is destroyed, battle and sense in the graveyard, you can reveal any number of forbidden monsters in hand and feed you draw a card for each. Wow. And the fact that we should, I believe we're going to be able to farm this, because this is an epic Yugi event. The fact that we're going to be able to farm this is actually crazy. I'm, I think I'm actually really hyped for the Legendary Exodia Incarnate. I think I'm going to definitely want to get that when it comes into Duel Links. It would be sick to make a Duel Links um, deck out of that. So, yeah, Legendary Exodia Incarnate, or whatever, however you pronounce this card. This card is actually pretty sick. Running three copies of this in an Exodia deck with Yugi or um, Yugi Moto skill, Grandpa's cards. That's going to be epic. I'm looking forward to that. So that's pretty cool. And that looks like that's going to be it when it comes to the um, new cards and stuff like that. So yeah, Epic Yugi coming to Duel Links. That is awesome. I'm glad he's coming back. And he's adding some pretty cool new cards. Next up in mid-April, we have Atlas Rising, the return of Jack Atlas. Unlock Jack Atlas alongside a new ranked re or new reward cards and a brand new skill for Jack Atlas. So yeah, this is not a surprise. I think I remember Brad calling or predicting that we're going to be getting Jack Atlas in um, Duel Links again for another event. So that's pretty cool that we're getting Jack Atlas again. For anybody that missed out on unlocking Jack Atlas the previous time in January, you have another opportunity to unlock Jack Atlas, which is pretty cool. So be sure to go unlock him and also get a new skill. Hopefully that can help out Red Dragon Archfiend in any way, so pretty sick right there. Next up, we have a mid-April special campaign underway. Complete tour guides be mission bingo to get awesome rewards such as gems and SR tickets. I'll take it. I'll definitely take that. Um, I mean, the last mission bingo wasn't too crazy, but it's still a cool thing to have in uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! New Links. In fact, we're getting that's cool. And one cool announcement right here is that in late or mid-April, we're getting special duels are back. This time, players going first will draw on their first turn, try out these special duels. These take place separate from ranked duels in KC Cup. So, I like this idea, okay? I really do like this idea. I think it's a kind of a good way to test out if Duel Links should have a first turn draw, because I'm going to guess the point of this special duels is for Konami to kind of test and speculate if make changing the game where you can draw first would actually help out the game by any means but at the same time this is going to feel the same as ranked pvp maybe worse um in ranked pvp but i still think it's a cool idea and i'm gonna guess this is just konami testing out the waters and seeing if drawing first will be beneficial for the health of the game when it comes to the competitive format because it does feel like it does feel like sometimes that players going second have a huge advantage over you going first, especially with a lot of OTK decks that have been running rampant throughout the months and years of Yu-Gi-Oh. The fact that going first usually messes you up more uh, than going second, at least for me personally. From my experience, going second is usually best, especially because I'm more of an OTK deck player. But the fact that you can draw first is actually pretty sick, but it's going to feel the same as ranked PP or KC uh, Cup and probably even worse because there's going to be a lot of cheese and stuff that's happening. Another thing too is that mill decks are going to like this because basically... Um, I, or I guess yes and no, because in some cases, mill decks are not going to like this, but in other um, cases, you're going to, like, you kind of know what's popping right there, so. It's a cool idea. I think it's a pretty cool idea, and it's nice that we're going to be getting that nonetheless, so. Special those coming back, yay! Next up, we have late April, a new chapter of Duelist Chronicles GX is here, is Jaden and Co's second year um, in Duel Academy. New friends and new foes find out it would... Find out what this year's school has in store for our hero. The fate of Duel Academy lies in the hands of destiny. Advance through the mat, rolling a die, and immerse yourself in the world of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. So, I'm disappointed only because I would much rather have a Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds Duelist Chronicles event. It would be really sick if we could see, like, you know, Kallen and Carly and have those unlockable through that event. But that's way too much an event. Konami hasn't released multiple characters in a row except when it comes to, like, new worlds for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. So, I'm not surprised by that at all. And it actually makes a lot of sense. I honestly... I honestly thought that the Satorius event that we're getting in a couple days was going to be a Duels Chronicles a GX event, but looks like they wanted to move that to next April after everybody has locked Satorius, so that's cool. I'm actually kind of happy about that. I am actually curious how the layout of the Satorius event is going to happen um, that we're going to be getting in a couple days and how it's going to compare it to the Duels Chronicles GX event right here, so that's pretty neat, but I really wish we had some, you know, com confirmation on the Dark Signers for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, especially because of that glitch that happened in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links where the Earthbound Immortals were the only cards, and if you if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, there's a video I made a couple days ago where uh, Konami made a, a mistake, and you could check out a lot of cards that are not supposed to have access to the players in the game, 
and a couple cards in there were the Earthbound Immortals, so I was kind of having some hope that the Earthbound Immortals were going to announce right here. But, yeah, looks like that's not going to be happening. Dual quests, though, is happening. Advance through the dungeon by obtain, by dueling and obtain rewards, such as um, card tickets and gems. That's cool, but honestly, what I'm going to talk about instead is that it looks like in late April, we're actually getting a ton of updates. So, Brad talked about a lot of this stuff, and it looks like it's finally confirmed in Konami. So, looks like late, what's happening is that the inventory capacity for rare jewels and dual orbs and booster items, that's going to be happening. Regarding the addition of Extra Deck Plus, for each Extra Deck Plus, you have your Extra Deck uh, capacity increased by one. The update to Auto Deck feature previous mentioned in the upcoming updates so will be postponed. So... The one big thing right here is the fact that the extra deck's actually getting increased. That is amazing that Konami's actually doing it. So, yeah, I don't know what else to say right there, but the fact that the extra deck's gonna go to six or seven um, extra slots is gonna be so amazing. It's gonna make Synchro Summoning a lot better and easier to do. And hopefully Synchro Summoning can be more of a toolbox thing in the future of Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. But that is honestly sick that that's actually happening. I'm really happy that we're getting an extra deck plus confirmed in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. Because uh, that leak actually happened like a week or so ago. I just never felt like talking about it um, on my channel. So if you didn't know about this, yeah, we're getting an extra deck increase and it actually confirmed right here So that is fucking sick these updates not that bad I think the April could have been better, but honestly for what it's worth It's not that bad um, at all And I think there's gonna be a lot of experimenting going on in the month of April Hopefully get a really sick mini box or not mini box main box coming in um, April tools So hopefully um April can be awesome with a sick mini or main box So yeah, things are gonna do for me in today's episode of upcoming updates. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode and if you haven't already, as always, be sure to go hit the like button on the video down below and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! related content. Check out some of my previous videos if you guys are still bored and want to watch other content from me. I uploaded a lot of cool Yu-Gi-Oh! news videos um, in this past like couple days or so, so be sure to go check it out. But yeah, I think that's going to do it for me in today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll go see you guys in the next Yu-Gi-Oh! video. Peace!